Hi, it's Corinne. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I am sharing a 12 by 12 scrapbook layout with you using a new digital collection from Knitwit Collections called Abigail. I'll be sure to link that down in the description box. You may have seen a journal that I made using this same collection. I am in love with this collection. It's gorgeous. If you've never used a digital collection or digital papers, check out the video that I will link down in the description box. I've done a video just explaining a little bit more about digital papers. I love working with digital papers because you can customize them however you want. If you don't want to customize them, Mary Fran from Knitway Collections does a lot of clusters and pre-clusters and embellishments for you. So you can simply print them out and use them for cards, mini albums, scrapbook layouts, whatever you'd like. It's endless what you can do with them. So if you have any questions regarding digital, let me know and I'll be happy to see if I can help. I've already pre-printed and cut out a lot of my embellishments. I do like to use my Silhouette Cameo to cut out my embellishments like these. If you don't have an electronic die cutting machine, you can simply print them out and cut them by hand. I cut quite a few, but I don't end up using all of these embellishments on this layout. And I also pulled out some lace, some twine, and flowers. My photo is four and three quarters square, and I also printed out a mat for my photo. Look how gorgeous this paper is. I love the detail in it. I printed that sentiment, love this moment, from uh, a sentiment I had in my stash. And the reason you see a white block at the bottom of that page is because I knew I was going to be covering that up, so I didn't want to waste any ink on the paper. That row of flowers that you see at the very top of my page, that's an embellishment that comes in the collection. If you, I'm not sure which one of the collections, but if you purchase the bundled, it saves you money and you get everything that comes with it. Tons of papers, tons of embellishments, digital stamps, and also Knitwit collections. Every time they come out with a new collection, they show a video where they go through everything that you receive in the collection. So if you're not sure if you want to only buy just the paper pack, they show you what comes in each paper pack, um, things like that. So check that out. I glued down my bottom piece. I believe that's about four and a half by 10, or excuse me, by 11. This is a 12 by 12 piece of paper, basil cardstock that I cut down, or I just cut off the manufacturer strip. And here I'm just folding back the top corners. I wanted to distress them a little, so I'm using my Tim Holtz distressor and just kind of creasing that up there. I'm gonna add a little piece of paper behind it. And I was considering adding lace behind it, but I decided to pull out this die that I have, this honeycomb shaped die and I'm using this gorgeous silver glitter paper. I'm gonna cut out this along with a bow. I'm gonna run that through my Sizzix die cut machine. I'm gonna run it through a couple of times because that glitter paper is really thick. And it actually came out pretty easy. I was also using a precision base plate under it as well, which helps. So I'll do most of this off camera, just so you don't have to sit there and watch that, but I just basically went through and popped out all those little pieces. I'm using my Tim Holtz paper piercer to pop them out. And my bow I like to kind of bend with my bone folder to kind of get it going, and then I like to use my hot glue gun. You want to be really careful if you're using a hot glue gun. Just gluing the center and then I'll glue it to the bottom there. So I'm going to just cut that apart so I can use the other piece somewhere else in the layout. Using some Fabri-Tac, I'm going to glue that down to that little piece that peeks out at the top there. This is such a beautiful collection. If you follow me, you saw that I recently made a journal using this collection with different color, a uh, different color scheme altogether. So I decided to use some scrap pieces of chipboard that I had in my stash to give my focal piece a little bit of dimension. So using my Fabri-Tac, I'm going to adhere that down. And I'm also putting pieces in the middle just so there it, it can't sag at all. And then I will glue this to my basil cardstock. You can probably see up close in the photos, the basil cardstock has on one side a little bit of a shimmer to it. So I made sure to have that side facing. I love the look of that. 
So I'm also adding some dimension behind my, my photo. I have a couple pieces of cardstock and then a piece of chipboard. So I'm adhering all that down. And you can see I got glue on that little mat. That mat I got from the Dollar Tree a while ago, it's a craft mat. And this is why I love it. You can just wipe it right off, it comes right off. Um, I know my Tim Holtz uh, mat does the same thing, but that likes to curl up on the edges. And this is a thick piece of plastic, so I love using this. I decided to tie in that same silver glitter paper, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it and making myself a mat. I will also cut out the middle of that since it won't be seen and I can save that for another project. I don't want to waste any of that glitter paper. I love it. Again, same glitter paper. I'm just going to cut off a strip so I can add that where those two pieces of design paper meet. And being that most of that's going to be covered up, I'm just going to cut that off and add some to the left and some to the right. That way I know I'm using the exact same size, the same thickness of my glitter cardstock. The Fabri-Tac really, it dries pretty quickly, but it also gives you a chance to move it around. And if you do get any on your pattern paper, you can just simply wipe it off. So again, I'm adhering down my photo mat. After I adhere down my glitter mat, it is it does have a little bit of thickness to it because of the glitter paper. So just, just in case my photo, I didn't want my photo to sag in the middle of that, I added a piece of cardstock back in the middle where I cut that glitter paper out. And now I'll add my photo. I'm trying to be careful not to get fingerprints all over it, so I'm gonna use another piece of scrap paper to really press that down. Trying to keep my fingers off the photo as much as possible. It's a photo of my great niece and I. She's absolutely a doll, and it was a very sweet moment. She was hugging on me and kissing me, and great memory. It was um, Thanksgiving of last year. So I'm just tucking in some small rosette trim from Wild Orchid Crafts, adding some to the right side as well. And now these gorgeous flowers, I'm rolling them up. I did double them on cardstock, so they're really thick, which is great for a, a scrapbook layout. I'm rolling them up with my bone folder to kind of crease out those leaves. The detail in those are just beautiful. There's another piece that I matted on that brown cardstock, so I'm gonna tuck that behind. And I like to just kind of print out things and cut them out and decide from there what I like to do. But I do sort of plan this out ahead of time in my silhouette studio. I like to kind of plan it out and then it changes sometimes as it goes and sometimes um, it pretty much ends up the same way that I planned it. And today, besides using a couple embellishments that I thought I would use, it pretty much ended up about the same. Like I said, I decided to add the glitter paper as a mat and a few other things. but it pretty much ended up being what I had decided on. So once I was happy with that rosette trim, I went ahead and hot glued that down. Adding a piece of pop dot behind one side of that because I want it to stick up slightly and then gluing the other side down. For my printer, I'm using an Epson Workforce 7710, I believe, and I'm printing the background paper that you see there, the basil paper, that's what I printed my design paper on, my pattern paper on. I have a wide format printer. If you don't have a wide format, you just do it a little bit smaller. You just print it out a little bit smaller sizes. I'm cutting up several pieces of foam squares to put behind the leaves because I want it to stick up where the leaves are and then be adhered down where the flowers are using my hot glue. And in case you're wondering, because this is going to end up being such a 3D scrapbook layout, I have those um, frames from Michaels that you can put 3D layouts in that I hang in my craft room. Sometimes, like in this case, I'm just going to hang it straight on my wall. In the end, I do end up gluing this onto a piece of chipboard and I put a little uh, a hanger on it on the back of it and just hang it up on my wall in my craft room. I love having my layouts around me. So I just wrote Thanksgiving 2017 and I realized that top piece there I glued it upside down so I'm just going to fix that real quick. I'm glad I caught that before gluing the second piece on. Now I'm adding my little label. 
and I finally decided on a place for this little scrap piece. I'm going to put it under the photo on the left there. And this little button, I, I put some twine in it. I will adhere that where it's sitting in just a moment. Added my bow. I decided by adding that bow, I wanted to cut out another tiny bow to put in that cluster up at the top left. So I'm going to run that through my Sizzix real quick, put that bow together, and that way it ties in that silver up at the top left as well. I'm using an Aileen's Ultimate Glue Gun. Like I said, you want to be really careful with it, but I have never burned myself. I've been using it for a couple years. Previous to that, I was using one of those cheap um, dollar store ones, and I would burn myself all the time on it. This one I love because it works really well, but... I've never burnt myself. So I wanted to add a few flowers. Of course, I'm pulling out Wild Orchid Craft Flowers, my favorite. And the ones that you see there on the left are the Wild Rose Baby Pink, uh, Baby Pink in the center. And those are my absolute favorite. I also am adding a Magnolia flower. And then on the bottom right cluster, I have a Magnolia there now, but I'm gonna switch that out for a, a white lotus flower. And then I'm also gonna add a few Hip Rose Buds as well. and adding some Wild Orca Craft Pearls to the center of those two little bows using a little bit of E6000. That does take a little time to dry, so you wanna be careful with that. And here's where I decided, I could have done that first, but I decided to go ahead and add my piece of chipboard. I'm using medium weight chipboard. And then, like I said, I'll put a little photo hanger. I'm not sure what it's actually called. You just stick it right in there. I'll put it in the top and then hang that in my room. Here's where I go ahead and add a few hip rose buds. And I was really happy to get this photo scrapped. I have quite a few photos that I've been needing to scrap. It always makes me feel good when I get them done because this was a really special moment between us and I was glad to have that as a keepsake. I'm adding a few Crystal Nouveau drops in the glossy white. Those are my absolute favorite. And to finish it off, I'm going to add in some photo corners, silver filigree photo corners. I'm using some uh, multimedia matte finish. And that's my layout. I hope you've enjoyed the process. Stay tuned for the up close photos and check out Knitwit Collections. They have such amazing, gorgeous products with tons of photos and embellishments. It makes it really easy to work with their kits. If you have any questions on it, please leave me a comment. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.